me and my ex met pff, about eight years ago. And I was actually trying to hook up with her friend in my head. Granted, um, this friend comes back later on, so I should give the friend a, a fucking name. We'll call the name Vikram. <laughs> So one day life is just, just going on and I end up meeting Vikram's friend, Jillian. She took my little heart. Jillian had a boyfriend at the time and I Mr. Steal Your Girl and I did. And sorry, buddy. And we dated for two and a half years and then she wanted to leave me. Now in this story, um, one of the huge issues the first time we dated and second um, is her parents. So her, her parents were very anti me and they were never going to accept me um, or our relationship. And so that put like a, like a fucking wrench in that. Oh, Jillian was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Like I either have you and lose them or I lose my family and then I don't have you and either way I'm not happy and maybe I need to fuck all these guys. I wanted to go off and you know suck some dick go for it. Okay, fine. Fuck you. Bye. Okay. The hardest breakup I ever went through was that first time. So after three years, you know, I dated people. I just didn't, nothing was like, like that relationship. The time I was dating somebody or talking to somebody, it was just like, ugh. Like on Jillian's worst day, I'd rather have that than your best day. So like there's just, it, it took a long time. You know, I had met somebody else. Things are like trekking along. I was like, okay, here we go, here we go. Life is finally good. And the motherfucking bitch comes back. Wait, wait, wait. She doesn't come back like normal, like, hey, what's up, hello? No, 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 no. This fucking girl texts my uh, relative, like literally texts my one of my relative's wives. These are people she did know um, that we did hang out with when we were dating. And then this story, when we were dating three years prior. So she knew these people, but you, we've been broken up for three years. You have no reason to message them. And the wife who I'm friends with, you know, she sends me a message and was like, Jillian just um, sent me an, um, a DM on Instagram. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? She sends me a screenshot. So now I see Jillian's username. And I was like, that fucking bitch, like what the fuck is she doing back? And so I DM her like, why the fuck are you talking to my relative's wife in this story? Like you have no business doing that kind of She made small talk. She starts sending me pictures of herself and I fall for it all. I fall for it all. Things started being funny right when we started dating. I ended up finding out that the job she claimed she had was not accurate. She told me she was a nurse in a hospital. She, she's not on there. So she fucking lied to me. Um, and this is all within probably the first two months of us being back, getting back together. Um, I find out she's not a nurse. I find out that she, not only that, but like, I would ask like, hey, why don't we go to your apartment this time? Or like, and she was like, no, 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 I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. And I didn't really think too much of it until I caught the, I caught her lying with the job. She was never a nurse. And then I was like, do you even have a fucking apartment? And then when she came clean and said, no, she said she didn't have an apartment. She lied about her job. She was still working like fucking bullshit jobs, I guess, living at home with her parents. Three months into the relationship, um, she tells me she's going to a bachelorette party. This is important for later. She doesn't even wanna go that she's in the bridal party um, and she's already paid for it. And then nothing's gonna happen because she doesn't like to drink and she doesn't like, to, to party and she wishes she could stay home. And I'm just like, whatever, like what else, I, like what, honestly, what else could go wrong in this story? On that trip, she was sending me pictures of herself, um, you know, in her bikinis. And I'm like, all right, like be safe kind of thing. Um, I never see any pictures of anyone she's with though. No, no. Our relationship is still rocky because like not only is she living at home, but all the problems we had three years prior are still the same. Her parents still fucking hate me. We can't like keep, we literally can't keep living like this. We used to see each other maybe three to five times a month, a month, three to five times a month. We lived in our part. So there, there was that. We both work with it. There's that. And then there's, there's a shit going on, right? It took extra time for me to see what was actually happening, I guess. She starts getting super sketchy, super sketchy, telling me that like her, that she told her parents about us um, and that they were not okay with it, that they were taking her phone at night so she couldn't talk to me, having like a code, a code word, like when she texted me because she told me she didn't have her phone at certain times and that her parents had it. So in order for them to not read our text we would have like a secret like code word that's how fucking bad it is okay you're 27 fucking years old like grow the fuck up already she tells me that she told her parents about us on christmas day and that they decided to kidnap her and take her to buffalo new york where she couldn't spend new year's eve with me into our second year 
she like I've had it like I literally have had it I'm like I can't do this anymore like I don't want to do this anymore I was frustrated I was stressed I was stressing her out from me being upset to the point where like I'm trying to break up with her in this story holding my hand she's like I don't want to lose you I don't want to lose you it's going to get better it's going to get better I promise it's going to get better and I'm like doing this thing in my head where I'm like she says this all the fucking time she said it since eight years ago like it never gets fucking better and I'm like it never gets fucking better and she's just holding my hand she's like no 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 like please like roll my eyes like all right all right whatever and she walked away from me she turned and she looked and she was like it's gonna get better you'll see and that's when she fell off the fucking grid she literally disappeared for <clears throat> three weeks um i'm worried that like she went home and told her parents to fuck off things are really bad things are really bad and i'm like it's gonna be fine like we're gonna be fine it's gonna be okay don't know what was in me that day to google her parents like google her parents i don't know what it, i've never done that before like i don't know what made me do that and i find out that during this entire time we were dating her parents had gotten arrested um they were in various court dates and they got sentenced um for defrauding the fucking government and i see a, a legit like press release like talking about their crimes and i'm like the fuck when they talked about like the various ways they defrauded the government and the jobs that they pretended to have all the jobs they pretended to have were literally synonymous with the jobs my ex had and jillian literally i'm like shit what if she got fucking arrested i literally am reading her mother hasn't worked a fucking day since i knew the woman and like there's no way she had these, these these are my ex's jobs in this press release so i'm like my fucking ex is intertwined with this fucking crime fuck me now i'm in like I'm in like phew, mode where I'm like, I gotta find her. I gotta make sure she's okay. Like I gotta find her. I'm texting her. I don't hear from her. I'm texting her like now at this point, we're over a month that has gone by and I hadn't heard from her and message her like, I know about your parents. And then it's like, she writes back. She's like, that's none of your business. My family's my business. And she's very nasty, nasty. Like I'm like, okay, okay. So the fuck, okay. It's my business when it affects our relationship. And how did it affect our relationship? This fucking chick was lying to me this entire time. On top of that, the court dates are very public knowledge. I write in a book, okay? And I started to see a pattern that every time there was a court date, Jillian would disappear or she would, or we would be fighting, 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 fighting because she was lying, lying, lying. And then her tone changed and her tone changed to like, things need to like, like the dust needs to settle. Um, okay. And so now at this point, I ended up getting a text every week i maybe like one text from a fake number every week um it was her and she was in, she was fine she was like I, you know things are really hard things are really hard i miss you i love you i'm sorry and i'm like don't worry like we got it we're gonna we're gonna make it don't be don't like don't worry about it i'm here like i have the getaway car it's t we're gonna be fine i'm not going anywhere i'm gonna wait for you just you know like i'm being as supportive as possible and this continued on for a few months and then nothing radio silence I don't know if like she herself never told me details I don't know if she had gotten arrested I didn't know if she had to like contribute to this household that owed all this money back to the government <laughs> I didn't have any idea I didn't know if she was even in the same house I had no idea where she was I was genuinely worried about this girl because like we literally left off with a, like some like a very like generic like text seven eight months goes by I'm starting to think like, all right, maybe she's like, whatever, whatever she is doing is obviously more important. Um, we never like broke up, so I didn't have this closure. And so the like last ditch effort I did around probably like the nine, 10 month mark was I actually wrote like a handwritten letter and I mailed it because I needed her to know that I waited. I start talking to other people and it's good. Like it's good to the point where I'm, was talking to somebody and like it's, it was so good that I started to feel guilty because like it was almost like it wasn't like a breakup it was more like like a widow type of thing the year anniversary came up my Facebook memories and within the Facebook memories a post was written on my wall from yes Jillian's friend Vikram that we talked about before Vikram had written on my wall eight years ago and the memory had coincidentally popped up on the same day that Jillian like came back to my life and i click vikram's profile I see vikram and jillian having a grand old fucking time i'm like the fuck this fucking bitch is not in jail and she's not dead and she's had parties so i decide to dm vikram 
Hey Vikram, no we haven't talked in eight years, but just wondering if Jillian was okay. And Vikram was so kind to reply to me, um, yeah, uh, yes, Jillian's fine. I basically tell Vikram, hey, like I was dating Jillian, this happened, everything I just said, and I was just wondering if she was okay. Vikram is like, what the fuck are you talking about? To the point where now I end up on FaceTime with Vikram and Vikram's friend who we're gonna call Vikram too. I'm on FaceTime with Vikram and Vikram and these are two people that are friends with Jillian who we all used to work together and they had no idea that Jillian was even dating me. Turns out that bachelorette party from the first like few months when we were back together was Vikram 2's. Vikram 2 was the one that was getting married on that trip. And regular Vikram was Jillian's roommate. Do you follow what just happened there? So Jillian left out that she went to this bachelorette party with Vikram and Vikram. Okay, left that out. And if she would have told me, I would have been like, holy shit, like tell my son hi, like normal people stuff. Like, and Jillian just left that out. So basically we pieced together the three years that this just all went on. And we basically mapped it out that Jillian led a double life. So she used to tell them I'm dating an older man um, upstate. And it's like, um, huh, older man. Although now in this story, she probably was cheating on me. Um, no, she definitely was cheating on me. <laughs> so fucking good and bad, but so good to know that I was not crazy because Jillian used to make me feel crazy. Um, you know, she used to tell me if, if I didn't want to be with you, I would just leave you. Like, I'm not cheating on you. Or, you know, like all these like things that made me doubt my gut instincts. And Vikram and Vikram were just solidifying that she's fucking crazy. We had told Vikram and Vikram um, some of the stories that Jillian had told me and they were like, that would have never happened or that's weird because she was over here. And like, and it just was, you know, it was it was a very tough pill to swallow, but I'm happy that the girls took the time to that talk to me and genuinely were like, shit, like sh who the fuck is this person that we've been friends with for all this time and that's in my wedding? And I'm like, I don't fucking know, but she's not my problem anymore. Like I literally washed my hands of her as of that phone call. Basically what I gathered from the two Vikrams was that she's basically being a drunk whore, which, fine um she sounds boy crazy as always but it also it's like is it a front is it because she doesn't want to you know be out of the closet and be happy to be with me you know i don't know um or she just never liked me it's like an awful lot of work to go through what jillian went through if she had zero feelings you know what i mean i was so relieved to know that jillian was okay and that she was she was okay on top of that i was even more happy to be so fucking disgusted with Jillian for the first time since I met her. Vikram and Vikram were telling me how how Jillian was making me sound like I was crazy, that I was texting her from fake numbers and emailing her, and that they interpreted everything Jillian was talking about from like eight years beforehand, and they had no idea that Jillian was even talking to me present day. That she had the choice this entire time to reach out to me and say, hey, we should break up or like, you know, like this entire time she had the ability. She wasn't in jail and her parents weren't stealing her phone. You know, she had the opportunity to end things with me if she so choose, chose to, and she didn't. One message I would like to say to Jillian, I am grateful that I met you. You came into my life and you just wowed me. Um, I know that deep down that you love me. I know it because I love you. And the thing that keeps you in a toxic relationship is the fact that like you keep hurting each other and hurting each other and hurting each other and hurting each other. But like, there's still that love there. There's still that fucking love there. And that's why we always go back, right? But when you listen to your gut, if you listen to your gut, that's trust. No amount of toxic relationship shit can trump trust. You break trust, that's a wrap, which is why Jillian and I got back together the second time, because we've always had a toxic relationship, but we've always trusted each other, okay? And now when we came to round two, and that trust slowly broke down over the course of the time, it made this ending right now, three years later, it makes this ending the end, because there's no trust. Therefore, the toxic relationship will never be worth jumping back into. And that's all I gotta say. Vikram, 
if you ever want to get back at Jillian for lying to you, hit me up, hit me in the DMs, because uh, I would totally do it. Still look good. We're done.